So let's do a quick little video about greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect. I like this new must confess, I just let off some greenhouse gases. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the greenhouse effect itself. A lot of people think it's all bad, but it's not. It's really important. We need this to live, literally. Because what happens, of course, out in outer space, it's a vacuum. There's no air. Uh, you can't have liquid water. So we don't think you could have life. So we owe our existence to this. And what happens is this. Our atmosphere, which is this... This is this beautiful, beautiful picture, it's taken by NASA, of the Earth, and you can see that tiny little wispy section there, that tenuous little bit of atmosphere, that is all that separates us from the cold vacuum of space. We need this. And what happens is this, the light, for example, from the sun, some of it will be absorbed, and we'll discuss this in more detail, it's absorbed basically by these gases, and then re-radiated into the atmosphere, so it basically heats it. Our atmosphere is like a warm blanket. That's really important. We need this to keep us warm. We need this to have enough pressure to have the water be liquid. We think that's what you need to have life. So greenhouse effect, not necessarily bad. Like I said, if you have a planet that doesn't have an atmosphere, we don't think you find life either. Now, sometimes atmospheres can go crazy. Like Venus, for example, has a, an atmosphere that has gone a little bit crazy. So there the temperature is, you know, hundreds of degrees Celsius. So we couldn't live there. So atmospheres can be... You know, too much, too little, a little bit like Goldilocks, so, you know, it's too hot or too cold or just right. So the main greenhouse gases we have in our atmosphere, like I said, some of them are naturally occurring, some of them are caused by humans. So let's look at them. The main ones that we need to be concerned with are these. Uh, methane, first of all, or methane, is uh, CH4. So it's one carbon with four hydrogen, CH4. Water vapor, of course, water is just H. Two O, oh, so it's two hydrogens, one oxygen. Carbon dioxide is C, so one carbon and two oxygen, so CO2. And nitrous oxide is actually N2, so two nitrogens and an oxygen. So these are the different ones. Now, what causes them? Of course, they can be naturally occurring. So these are here occur in nature, but there are also versions of them that are caused by humans. So again, if we talk about the greenhouse effect, yes, these things occur naturally and the atmosphere warms. It's been warmer in the past, it's been cooler in the past. However, we humans are definitely emitting lots of things. So for example, uh, well, because of agriculture, there's extra methane. And by the way, there's lots of other ones. It's just a few of the main ones. Water vapor and carbon dioxide, those are mainly from, you know, fossil fuel combustion. So things like, you know, your car, for example, is a big one, or, you know, power plants, at least if they're using these, like, for example, gas or diesel or something like that. A lot of these things do cause this. So what we're going to say is if uh, these effects are being basically boosted by humans. You know, these things that are happening, if we're causing them, we're going to call it the enhanced greenhouse effect. Now, how does it actually happen? So the, how does a greenhouse effect uh, really happen? How do these gases really absorb energy? Well, we have this, the light from the sun, first of all. So the light that we receive from the sun. Okay, so we got our lovely sun there that's over there. And it's emitting all the light here coming up. What happens is, of course, it reaches the earth. And there's different colors of light. There's different wavelengths of light. Different ones do different things. So for example, um, ultraviolet, well, it's too high energy. So although this light does reach us, it's not going to be important for greenhouse gases because what happens, it's just going to break these bonds. Like oxygen atoms, for example, can break up. They end up making O3, which is ozone. We do need that actually to protect us from some of the sun's light. So I mean, a lot of these things are still important, uh, but it's just not going to be what's going to be heating up the atmosphere. What's mostly heating up, though, is actually infrared light. So this one right here is the important one. Infrared, so colors redder than red, so like 700 nanometers and higher. Um, we've got light can be absorbed by these gases. These gases we just discussed here, so methane, water vapor, carbon dioxide, or nitrous oxide. So let's see what really happens. So light from the sun, for example, especially the infrared, it's incident on these greenhouse gases, right? So it runs into them. Now, it happens to be that this frequency of light, this infrared, this it's a very special frequency that comes in, or at least this range of it, because these molecules like to vibrate. They have a, um, a natural frequency at which they vibrate, and it turns out that frequency of the light matches the resonance frequency of these molecules, which means if you hit them at that, you know, periodic, so you hit them at that frequency, then they tend to actually vibrate. So what ends up happening is this light comes in, it's at just the right frequency to make these gases vibrate.
And what happens when they vibrate, of course? Well, then you end up with this resonance vibration. It leads to what happens, of course, uh, kinetic energy, and that means it raises the temperature. So this is the process by which these gases can actually heat up the atmosphere. And again, it's just because the light coming in happens to be at the resonant frequency of these molecules. It makes them basically vibrate, increases their kinetic energy. That means that the temperature goes up.